Hey everybody, Chris Serino here for Sultana Education Foundation's Virtual Classroom. I'm here on the Chester River in the beautiful colonial port of Chestertown. You can see behind me the 1768 reproduction of the Scooter Sultana. And today on this video, we're going to be talking about how to conduct a test to monitor the dissolved oxygen levels right here in the Chester River. So let's talk a little bit about dissolved oxygen. How does oxygen get into the water? Well, there's really two ways. One is you can have plants that live in the water, whether they're rooted plants on the bottom or algae up at the top that give off oxygen through the process of photosynthesis. Another way oxygen can get into the water is literally by being pushed down into the water by things like wave action or the wake of a boat or even rain driving oxygen into that water. So when scientists measure dissolved oxygen, they do it using a unit known as parts per million. So for every million molecules in a solution, six of those molecules would need to be oxygen in order for these apex predators to survive and thrive. But you'll see different animals have different dissolved oxygen needs. So worms that might live way down on the bottom only need one part per million. And kind of going on up the scale to spot at two per million, crabs at three, owlwife herrings at four, white and yellow perch at five. But most of these apex predators, we really want to see five or six parts per million in order to ensure that the marine life here has plenty to breathe when they're underwater. So to conduct this test, I have a really cool unit from Chemets here, and this is called a self-filling ampule. What I'm gonna do is take a water sample, fill this up to the 25 milliliter line, okay? I take this self-filling ampule and I put it right in the bottom and I push it so that the tip breaks off. You can see there's a reagent in there. That reagent is going to react with my water sample and turn this solution into a different shade of blue. So let's see how that works. So I'm going to break the tip. There it goes. The water is now in there and there's a bubble that I'm going to have go up and down and that's going to thoroughly mix the water in my sample with the reagent in the self-filling ampule. And then the last step in my test, now that my sample has turned a, a shade of blue here, is to take this device called a color comparator. You'll see these numbers along the bottom. These represent parts per million. So one part per million on the left, 12 parts per million on the right, and all these readings in between. You can see each number has a different shade of blue above it. I take my water sample and I match it up to the color that's closest to my sample. So it looks to me like I'm kind of right here between eight and 10 parts per million. So let's call it nine parts per million. All right, so taking that result and coming back to my chart, you'll see our apex predators require at least six parts per million of dissolved oxygen in the water to thrive. Today, we measured about nine parts per million. So at least today, on the surface of the Chester River, we have enough dissolved oxygen to support marine life. Now, how do you get into a situation where you don't have enough dissolved oxygen? Well, in the Chesapeake, the main way that happens is through algae blooms. Usually this is late in July and August. A lot of nutrients get into the water, algae blooms and proliferates. And then when that algae dies and sinks to the bottom, bacteria work overtime to eat all that dead decomposed plant matter. And they can use up the oxygen really quickly to where the DO goes way down here to one or two or even lower. And that can lead to fish kills for these apex predators. So by keeping nutrients on land and out of the water and so far as we can, we can keep healthy dissolved oxygen levels here in the Chester River and the Chesapeake Bay. That's today's lesson for Sultana Education Foundation's virtual classroom. Hope you'll join us here later for more cool videos.